Um, I'm going to do a poem by Blue the Shearer uh, called The Cross-Eyed Bull. Um, and it's on my new album. Um, I've, I've just finished making my album um, uh, uh, about a month ago now. And it's for $10 up the back there and if you want to grab one. No particular reason to do <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you blokes about the cross-eyed bull I bought? I couldn't put it in the shows. At least that's what I thought. But then I meet this bloke who says, oh, I'd like to take a look. Those eyes aren't bad. Bring up the vet. His number's in the book. Although I don't have too much faith, I bring him up that day. I say, me bull's got cross eyes. Can you come out right away? So out he comes. He looks, he thinks, he takes a tube of glass, he walks around the bull's backside, shoves it up that hole <laughs> under the tail. <laughs> then he takes a mighty breath. He blows, he puffs, he sucks. <laughs> the eyes rotate and straighten out. The vet says, 50 bucks. <laughs> Fifty bleeding bucks, I think. Now there's a tidy sum, just for half a minute's work, blowing up some little piece of glass tubing. <laughs> <laughs> Still and all, I pay the vet. He straightened out the eyes. I take the ball to Sydney's show and win a major prize. And win a major prize! <laughs> I cart him round the bush a bit. We're doing well, and then I have to take him home because the eyes are crossed again. <laughs> this time, no vet. I know the drill. I'll save myself some dough. I take my tube, I shove it in, and I begins to blow. I blow and puff and puff and blow, and still the eyes stay crossed. I'm forced to ring that bleeding vet and mourn the dough I've lost. So out he comes, a very knowing smile upon his face. He knows I've tried to fix me bull. I've left the tube in place. <laughs> <laughs> he grasps the tube, reverses it, takes one tremendous puff. I see the eyes rotate again and straighten, sure enough. I pay the vet and say to him, look, just before you go, don't tell me that the secret's knowing in which end to blow. <laughs> nah, mate, he says, you can blow from north, east, west or south. But you didn't think I'd use the end that you'd had in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Your life be short or long, it can pass you in a flash. It's how the whole thing balanced out. It's how you done your dash. <laughs> Some they led a sheltered life, they lived within a bubble. Others' lives were rough as hell. Life was nothing but trouble. Your marriage was a failure, you always seemed to clash, but you can still get out of it. That's how you done your dash. The handsome and the beautiful are pleasing to the eyes. Let's hope their lives are useful, not deceitful and with lies. It's not very important how you save and save your cash. You can't take it with you. That's how you spent your dash. Others were never contented. They looked for pastures greener, but usually found the paddocks were very much the leaner. You may have worked your guts out and put away a stash, but the main thing to remember is how you done your dash. If your dash is wavy, with many a rise and fall, then that's a take an average when you get that final call. Maybe you'll be cremated and they'll turn you into ash. But this is immaterial. 
It's earlier than your day. <laughs> Suddenly stretch their lives out. Just like a rubber band. They had so little fun in life when they come to show their hand. You may have been a superstar and made a mighty splash. But when the water settles, it's how you done your dash. Let's say you dealt a rugged hand. Life to you was tough. And when you said to packing, you'll say you've had enough. With life you made a mess of it. You turned it into mash. You've really thrown the ball away. You've really done, done your dash. dash. <laughs> but God will balance up the scales. You work out what you're worth. It will all be weighed and balanced before you leave this earth. Your life has ended suddenly. It ended with a crash. That silver spoon won't help you. It's how you done your dash. <laughs> his hand on a shape of behind. He's testing, he tells her for skin that he's loose. But in technical terms, it's known as a goose. <laughs> <laughs> they have a young son so eager to learn. His fingers are twitching while waiting their turn. Although only two, he follows his mum. He imitates daddy. He's a pension of mum. <laughs> they try to dissuade this adventurous lad by telling him daily that goosey was bad. But alas, they both fail, though hard they did try. And he still follows mum with a gloom in his eye. <laughs> One day he saw mummy delightfully nude, bending over the bar. His aim he pursued. <laughs> oh, what happened next, I do not wish to linger. And you'll have to ask Mummy where Tim put his finger. <laughs> Tim's barred from the bathroom while Mum's in the roar and Dad's reconciled to goosing no more. <laughs> the story is true. I can offer you proof. The hold is still there where she went through the roof. <laughs> But this generally you take the photo of. He's <laughs> uh, quite the winner. Can you stand up when you've taken this photo? Yeah. <laughs> Press the one on the right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a video. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And he's got a magnificent shirt on. And he, uh, he's cooperating really well. Never mind. Loud shirt, we'll start show you later. So um, yeah, I'm actually the, the uh, words of a dog comedian. And uh, as such, I, I, my supervisor's not here, so I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> stand here for a while. It's good being on the dial actually because I can get a couch and a television off the tax. <laughs> <laughs> and as I um, people are getting old deliberately so they can bloods off the government, I know I am. <laughs> and I got down the road with one leg and I said, Come on mate, pull up your sock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going. Let's get there. <laughs> I think young Eddie set the standard, and we're going from there, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, for Eddie again, eh? Right? I'll sing at you now. Sister, I actually won the 1998 South Tamworth Bowling Club Talent Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast nationally on SBS. It had subtitles. It was a 
<laughs> like that a lot out. The guy came second was a Hindu country music singer called Ranjit, Roger Ranjit. And he sang on my favourite Hindu country music chairs like Thank Krishna, I'm a country boy. Took the fine time to leave me Viranismu Sri Ramanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanaman
Right? <laughs> When's the comedian start? Yeah, we'll tell us the joke, fat man. I've heard them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll do another song for you. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear some political songs? Yeah. yeah! Well, there have been a few. <laughs> this is a um, love song for a politician. This is a love song for Bronwyn Bishop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was still going, oh, they feel the same way I do. <laughs> if you feel like waving your cigarette lighters around, don't, because the place will go up. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you in the paper, you know my heart just skipped a beat. I just had to tell you, Bronwyn, you could make my life complete. To me, you look so lovely and fair. How do you do that trick with your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Can't bear to be without you. My heart is not that strong. Can't stand to see you wrong with a former member for Ben. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> I'm sick of loving you from afar I want to ride with you in your commonwealth car Ride with you in your helicopter <laughs> Your love child, Bronwyn. I want to have your child. I love to touch your shoulder, patting it really drives me wild. Treat me like your toy boy, Bronwyn. Treat me as you like. Cross the floor to me, back, baby. Love me on the back bench tonight. <laughs> Sometimes when I dream about you, I get this peculiar mood to read your words in hand sight and lie in bed completely. <laughs> I love to hear you talking tough on the news. I love to see you kicking heads in your heart. Heads in your heart. I hear you. I want to have your love, child. I want to have your child. I love to touch your shoulder, patting it really drives me wild.
In the foods from RSL, they've got kids, a kids RSL, and you have to train kids to be RSL patrons. And they've got all these six year olds drinking shanties and talking about the war. <laughs> <coughs> Mary Banson, not in those sandals, mate. <laughs> anyway, I won't tune this back. So, um, how are you up for something a bit rude? I'll just I'll leave I'll just leave something all alone and go straight into another song. The, the, uh, I just got back from Queensland. I live up near Queensland in uh, Tweed Heads, and Queensland's a great place because it's the only place I know where a Wally can be a king. <laughs> you know when Wally King Wally retired, they made this nine foot statue outside Lang Park. Nine foot statue of King Wally Lewis, and when Alfie Lang was tied, they made a key ring. <laughs> it's a rugby league joke that might be wasted on. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Hi. They're complaining, I can't hear you. Oh, rubbish. Oh. Turn it on! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> joking. You don't know how difficult it would be to fire a hole, hole, hole and get this. Because sometimes mm. it's up completely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I've got what I was going to do now. Yeah, I haven't got this plug in, but I'll play it later anyway. So, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, Queensland. Yeah, I, I went down to. Uh, mm. You know, the Gold Coast, it's where Australians go instead of having an afterlife. <laughs> uh, it's full of sunburned Victorians blinking in the light. <laughs> they all wear black down there in Victoria. I thought it was a uh, fashion thing, but it's only to absorb the sunlight. And uh, I went to the museum in Melbourne. Has anyone been to the museum there? Yeah. Uh, has anyone been anywhere? Has there anyone ever been outside Asquith? <laughs> Anyway, I went there to the museum in Melbourne. They've got this. They've got far lap stuffed in a glass cabinet. There's far lap in there. I said I couldn't help myself. I went up the guard and said, "Geez, you're flogging a dead horse there." <laughs> no one had ever. He'd been there 45 years, and no one had ever seen that. They've got all the national sports heroes there. They've got Don Bradman stuffed in another glass cabinet. And, um, they have a stuffed him. Looks like Shane Warne. <laughs> Right there, Barry. It's a statement you're going through. <laughs> this is sing along, okay? I'm just getting my pants up again because I've lost weight. Yeah. I haven't lost any. Alright, just half of my mind. So, <coughs> this song is a sing along, so in the fine tradition of Australian sing alongs, when it comes your turn to sing, I want you to sit there like this. <laughs> Thanks for demonstrating for everyone. That's right. <laughs> Seen trouble in my life. I've got three kids and a wife, a house to fix and edges to maintain. I put kids on the potty, the carpet there is spotted, and I know which kid caused each and every stain. I've lived through two world wars and the one against the Boers, and of pain my life has given me my share. Sometimes when things got tough, you'd think it was enough to hasten the degrading of my hair. But there is something you should know that many years ago, I did something that made me sick inside. When I think of it, I wince, and I've regretted ever since. The day I wore my inside thongs outside Inside thongs outside The day I wore my inside thongs outside Inside thongs outside The day I wore my inside thongs outside That's the single bit of it was a fine and sunny morn, and outside on the lawn, 
My kids were playing in the bright sunshine I said to Jude, bye bye To the backyard I must fly To hang these plastic bags on the line In my haste I forgot To check which bombs I got To put on to foil the windy eyes I stepped into a pair that lay innocently there Inside thongs and outside thong disguise <laughs> Sink inside thongs outside The day I wore my inside thongs outside Inside thongs outside The day I wore my inside thongs outside Help a diff. My skin is sensitive and coarsely woven fabrics I can't bear. And I can feel the snag from that sharpish nylon tag they sew into my target underwear. <laughs> and it gets me quite upset if they get my bark mat wet. Cause that is not what God made bath mats for <laughs> But the strife with bath mats give Is nothing compared with The pain of mixing thong types at the door <laughs> Sink inside thongs outside The day I wore my inside thongs outside Inside thongs The hall. <laughs> the object is not to celebrate 40 years, it's to clear the hall. And I tend to do that. Right, a few impressions for you. See if you can guess who this is. Uh, <laughs> so I start with the simple ones. <laughs> That'll be Hitler, okay? He's big in the 40s. That's Punk. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay, that's John Howard. Tim <laughs> Beasley. Mal Meninga. <laughs> Elvis Presley. <laughs> an Orthodox Jew. <laughs> an unorthodox Jew. <laughs> a hipster. <laughs> or a terrorist. <laughs> I don't know, a, a feminist. Last <laughs> <laughs> but not least, I'm broke now doing this year. A feminist at the beach. <laughs> well, that's it from me. You've been very kind. I've been very away. I guess it was the death of Jimmy Darcy that prompted the decision to provide a mantle of safety for the outback.
truly wonderful plan. It was John Flynn. What a mighty man. His vision for the outback. A truly wonderful plan. Flynn mustered his supporters all around him. And slowly to fruition came the plan. Simpson, Traeger, Barber, his old mate, Hugh McKay, and Hudson Fish, they were loyal to a man. Aeroplanes and wireless would span this vast brown land to reach the furthest out station hand. Medicine for the bushies, a model for the world. The flying doctor's banner was unfurled. Join me. He was John Flynn. What a mighty man. His vision for the outback. A truly wonderful plan. He was John Flynn. What a mighty man. His vision for the outback. A truly wonderful man. So rest easy in your grave now, Jimmy Darcy. In the knowledge that your death was not in vain. The flying doctor service is a goer. To handle all the suffering and the pain. The people of the bush now have a better life. The furthest boundary rider Lonely drover's wife, the people of the bush kept in touch, given a go. It took a man like Flynn to make it so. He was John Flynn. What a mighty man! His vision for the outback, a truly wonderful plan. Just, just to extend the story about this is like having family here. Um, we have a, in our house, we've got a fantastic front room. It's, it's just perfect for music. Bev and I do a lot of practice there. Back in the day, I've had the privilege of the, the Weezers and uh, the Roaring Forties actually used to occasionally get together. Um, and we've had the privilege of listening to that glorious sound. And I think, for the first time, or the early days when that happened, we, uh, we've got two daughters and a son, but uh, I know, I but uh, one of our younger daughters said about the uh, Roaring Forties, here come the Santa Clauses. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're a, a Marx Brothers fan, you know that there ain't no Sanity Clause. <laughs> This is a tragedy, by the way. Now I'm most depressed and sad, where I once was blithe and glad. I could trip around the town, but trip and leave. I was happy night and morn, but I've all such joys unshorn since I fell asleep. 
Uh, we, used to, we used to get terribly close. Pretty much every day it crosses our mind in one way or another or another or a trump. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all you gotta do is kind of pitch it. He would have had fun with Trump when you were I think he would deal with this post satire world very well. Um, but we weren't, didn't actually plan to sing any of John's, but we think, oh, what can we do? We could do one of John's, could we? And we thought, well, we'll sing you the first song that John Dengate ever wrote. The very, very first one. Um, some of you will be able to join in. Perfect our platoon commander, slow palms quick march all day long. Should our minds from drill me under, or if we should do something wrong, will thou show all us? He reproaches us softly, kindly. Drill for you this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that was our school song. Our school song. John's Girls High School song. That was your school song? High school Without song. Without the bastard bit, I guess. <laughs> 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 behind the weather shed, it was the bastard. Truth, unity, and comfort. Every time I take the kids to school, sometimes we take them through the front gate, and occasionally we go down the back way, and it always brings back all these memories. <laughs> <laughs> None of which I discuss with my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of Henry Lawson pieces. The uh, the great beneficiaries of tonight, apart from this wonderful folk club. Now I'll say it right now. Uh, Chloe and I started making our living from playing music 21 years ago, and it's no coincidence at all that I think most of those 21 years we've had a concert here at this mighty, mighty club. Yes, it's a folk club. Yes, it's a family. It's a force of nature. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Sydney, Australia and the world is very, very lucky to have the Hornsby Folk Club. I firmly believe that uh, the future of humanity starts in places like this and people like us get together and sing. Anyway, we're going to do a couple of Henry Lawson pieces, a very short poem and then a, a slightly longer song. Uh, in tribute to, uh, well, uh, the beneficiaries of tonight are the Flying Doctors, and I think you'll see the resonance with the poem. One of Henry's best poems. Um, I, I find it one of his scariest as well, a poem called Outback. I've been trying to do it for years and years and years. I never wanted to recite Outback because Campbell, the swaggy, lovely picture of Campbell up the back there, uh, Campbell does it too well. <laughs> um, but we finally wrote a tune that I think goes okay. But we'll introduce it with a very short poem. And what you've got to imagine with this poem is Henry Lawson in reciting in a pub. So I'll ask you before we start, who out there, be honest now, raise your hand if you've ever recited a poem in a pub. It has to be the front bar. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Add Henry Lawson to the list. Oh, yeah. In the parlour of the shanty where the lives have all gone wrong, when a singer or reciter gives a story or a song, or a poet's heart is speaking to their hearts in every line till the hardest curse and blubber at the thoughts of old Lang Syne, then a boozer lurches forward or with an oath for all the sky. Prayers and curses in his soul, and tears and liquor in his eyes. Grasp the singer or reciter with a death grip by the hand. Oh, that's the truth, bloke. Sling it at him. Oh, God, blimey, that was grand. Oh, don't mind me. Oh, I've got him. Oh, what's your name, bloke? Oh, don't you see? Who's the bloke what wrote the poetry? Will you write it down for me? And the back blocks barred goes through it, ever seeking as he goes for the line of least resistance to the hearts of men he knows. And he tracks their hearts in mateship, and he tracks them out alone, seeking for the power to sway them till he finds it in his own, feels what they feel, loves what they love, learns to hate what they condemn. He takes his pen in tears and trials, 
and he writes it down for them. The old year went and the new returned in withering weeks of drought. And the cheque was spent that the shearer earned, and the sheds were all cut out. The publican's words were short and few, and the publican's looks were black. The time had come as the shearer knew to carry his swag out back. The time means tucker and it's tramp, you must when the scrubs and plains are wide. But seldom a track that man can trust, or a mountain peak to guide.
Peace out. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, so, yes, the Foreign Doctor from the Police, that they'll be the beneficiaries of some, some good funds, but in, importantly, also some goodwill tonight. This is Joanna's favourite poem. I promised her I would do it. I'm sorry, it's of little or no consequence. Uh, oh, I, could, I suppose I could introduce it like this. Has anyone been to the dentist recently? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> is anyone going to the dentist in the near future? <laughs> I'm doubly sorry. <laughs> it's nice to catch up with Roger Montgomery and uh, John Anglis out there at St Albans. Dingo's breakfast. Mm. And uh, this is one of Roger's uh, pieces about his uncle Jimbo. This is a love story, everybody. We haven't had too many of those tonight. We've had a couple. But this is a, bit, I guess a particular uh, slant on a love story. Uh, it's a story of love, fear, pain, and the whole dentistry thing. <laughs> it all started late one ten bong eight bottle night. Whilst catnapping under the sofa, I found an aging minty. Oh, <laughs> oh all. popped it in, paper and all, bit and a large molar crackingly disintegrated. Streaks of white fire girdled my head. I bit the inside of my lip till it bled and it bled, popping painkillers till my knackers went numb. Whilst all the while. Awful pain, vile twang round my jaw with a razor edge strum. And thusly I howled down the long night and into the dawn when, pale and drawn, I did stumble through that identical door with a fear and a pain crazed heart. I said to the dentist, Oh, don't look so afeard, I'll just root through your beard. And wielding two chromed crowbars, he levered my jaw bones. <laughs> oh, I'm dying, I grunted as through my cake. Holly hunted, scrabbling around down my throat. His breath left me troubled, and my nostril bubbled. <laughs> the overall odour was reminiscent of a goat. As he twisted, he ground, he heaved up and down, bracing his knees on my neck, grunting and grinding. The pain was quite blinding as he roared, Oh, this mouth is a terrible wreck! Then he let out a crazed shout. Hand and pincers flew out with a juicy and quite crunchy crack. Is it gone, says I, or bugger your tooth? He bellowed in language uncouth. I've just stuffed the lower half of me back. <laughs> well, my last straw snapped. With a glare, I leapt from the chair, squeezed his neck till his eyeballs extruded. He squeezed my neck too, till we both turned bright blue. Civilization's thin veneer quite viciously occluded. And like wild beasts uncaged up and down his surgery, we raged till, with a most unnursing like roar, his dental aid leapt through the air, smacked me and my jaw back into the chair, then rabbit punched that mad bastard dentist flat out on the floor. You bubbleheads! She blasted. Her bright white crab breasts were heaving with passion. <laughs> Wild eyed and ashen, she bawled us both out, punctuated by swift kick and clout for conducting ourselves in such insane and asinine fashion. Well, the dentist agreed as his bridge work she need. <laughs> but he picked himself and his pies up off the floor. That thing a wheel find your pig's bum, I opined, is like Silorendo, my way out the door. <laughs> Next time I'm in pain, I'll call in again. But it's your aid, I'll be coming to see. <laughs> Another cracking punch on the dial to remove chopper violet. Once again, dentist, the menace, you will not get your fee. <laughs> well, the upshot in this saga Dreadfully dentalistic push and shoulders. That powerfully pugilistic nurse and I are now very much in love. <laughs> <laughs> Another um, person I remember from this room, but we're not going to see tonight, is Alastair Hewlett. We've all already had yeah. a wonderful <clears throat> version of Blue Murder. That got the goosebumps going forties. Um, hearing Blue Murder, um, another one of Alastair's with the chorus. He hopefully can join in us. I actually heard this song um, back when I first came to Sydney. Um, I raced off from the bush to Sydney, chasing 
psychedelic rock and roll stardom and super lights and flash. You can see how well that went. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the first bands I ever saw when I came down to Sydney in the, in the 80s was a mighty band called Roaring Jack. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Not only did I love their music, but um, they gave me a lot of words to describe how I felt about the world at war. And this is one of the songs I was singing. Really loud. How I'm sure you know the voice. Destitution Road. Ah, tuning the root. A man and his mate once begat. Bouncing triplets called Nat, Tat and Pat. It was fun in the breeding, but hell in the feeding, because there wasn't a spare tit for Tat. Country in fetters and chains, outlaws and rebels, but numbers for names. And on the triangle were beaten and made, bloodstained the soil of Australia. And dookies and duchesses, flashlights and whores, who worked their plantation to polish their floors, lived in their shadows and died in their wars. Till the smileys can all 
much. We've got time for one more. We're very, very pleased to have been asked down from Millfield to um, come and celebrate this club's 40th birthday. I don't want to spend too much time and uh, more time telling you why. It's been a long night, but it's been a wonderful night, except to ask you to give one more round of applause for all the wonderful performers that have been up on the stage. Gee, it's been a good night. Mm -hmm. so, Fair to say, one more round of applause for Barry and Pam. <laughs> there's, um, there's one overriding memory uh, when we leave here after a gig, and I, I'd say it's been most years over those 20 years that we've come down and played a concert of one kind or another or another. And uh, it's, it's driving down that road heading west with huge grins on our face at the, at the wonderful company we've had. So um, that's my personal thanks to you. Thank you very much. We're going to finish with a song that's very uh, close to our hearts. It's a song about, uh, well, when I first was, uh, I, I had 17 changes of school, but most of them were around regional and rural New South Wales, and all of the towns that I grew up near a little farm that Dad was working on or whatever. They were thriving little, uh, little hubs of activity. And uh, they're not so much in uh, uh, the depopulation of the bush is something that I think is a, well, perhaps it's not as hidden as I worry that it is, but it's uh, certainly the saddest single thing uh, that's going on in, in my lifetime. When, I, when we first moved to Tottenham, you know where Tottenham is, don't you? Tottenham, right in the middle of New South Wales. Don't let the condo folks tell you it's condo. It's Tottenham. So from here, you would drive straight west till you get to Bogan Gate and turn right where the big trucks park. <laughs> <laughs> Not you still turn right. <laughs> <laughs> and as you leave in Bogan Gate, you head north, of course, the War Memorial Obelisk is in the middle of the road. And uh, the locals call it the breathalyzer because if you hit it, you're too drunk to drive. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and then you go through the T's, Trundle, Tullam, Tottenham, and okay, with all the T's. Trangy's out there too if you want to take a detour. And uh, Trundle's, Trundle's famous for its wide main street. If you've been to Trundle, you know they used to turn the drays around, including my great 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 grandfather used to turn his dray around there. Bring him back, bring him back Trundle and home. 65 metre long Watland door. Hub, two stories in Trump. 65 metres long, two storey Watland Door Hotel. Well, I'm not sure you could measure it in a straight line anymore. No, <laughs> no. no unfortunately it's in Trundle, so it's kind of turning back to dirt slowly, which I think is a sad thing. No one's going to sink all the money into that. But I can promise that a very small percentage of any CD sales tonight will go over the bar of the Trundle Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> anyway, this is a song that. Um, Kind of pleads to bring back the bring back regional and rural Australia. I'm not sure this is a very big country, and when there's no one living on it, I'm not sure how we're supposed to look after it. And I think it's a big issue. And uh, if, if some of you might have been the kind of people who spent your life in in Sydney or in the cities, generally speaking, uh, I can tell you it's changing out there. It's changing radically. Let's sing this like they're going to bring the railways back. We're old folkies. We, we believe if everyone sings, things change. <laughs> What's the alternative? Well, this old town has had its day. All the people moved away. The houses standing empty in the dry and dusty day. No one cares for this old town. Now the money is not around. The railway line is rusty and the station's fallen down. But when the railway opened here, all the gutters flowed with beer, and people stood beside the line to watch and wave and cheer. And the speeches that were made as the bosses smiled and said, The time's beginning, follow us. Singing, no, 
nicely, so I'm just kind of learning the chorus, I guess. Michael O'Rourke song, I forgot to mention a Michael O'Rourke song, most famously done by the Fagans, which reminds me just before we came down tonight, I was talking to James, who was just about to do his one of the folk program, James Fagan over there in, uh, in England, and he said to say, happy birthday, Hornsby folk club. <laughs> and I knew they forgot to say it, and he would have killed me. So happy birthday for me. <laughs> And uh, they like doing things to him like, I've never, never, this is the first time I've played this or sung this. And, and he, within a few bars, he's got it. He's, he's amazing. And Lindsay, Lindsay writes some terrific songs. That's sort of a swinging style. And if you let him get out of here without doing his, um, his bus song, uh, well, you just 
don't let it go. <laughs> because it's fantastic. He is a bus driver, and he, he, uh, he drives the kids' buses. The kids must love him because uh, it's just fantastic. And uh, the magic bus song is just terrific. It'll take you off. Uh, all right. Um, thank you. Thank you for being with me. And uh, Pam uh, and, and you, a wonderful audience. So uh, we'll see you next month. Please take all your stuff with you. And um, yeah, please go quiet. The other Mrs. Fox is gone. <laughs> there, are other fox, there are other foxes out there. <laughs> so we need to go quiet. Take a little bit.